Okay. So, um, <clears throat> first of all, uh, as I didn't uh, do any talk in English in, any, uh, in, in my entire life, <laughs> so let me first apologize for my probably somewhat rough English and uh, German accent. Um, have been missing some practice in recent years, and uh, I will probably need to read more instead of speaking freely, which is what I normally do. So, who am I? Uh, I'm living and working here in Karlsruhe, so I did not need to travel that far. Uh, I'm an active mapper since 2007, when uh, most parts of our area um, were blank spots on the map still. During that time, I started doing uh, geo-information stuff at my day job, so I came in touch with the other side. Um, and uh, recently, I haven't been doing that much mapping anymore. Um, beyond other things, um, I'm the maintainer of the German Mapnik style. And So what's the reason um, for doing this talk? What's my motivation? Um, yeah, for, for some reason, OpenStreetMap and uh, free and open source uh, geo-information system community seems to be largely disjoint. And not that much inside Germany, where we have the Foskis, and uh, Foskis is, 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 is very near to OpenStreetMap. Um, but I got the impression that this is a little bit the case in the rest of the world. And uh, it's interestingly, the former tend to use Mapnik for rendering, and the latter tend to use uh, the map server or, or geo server. And um, that's always uh, something you see uh, if you go to a Foskis conference. You see uh, people with a, a geo-information system background are not, usually not using Mapnik. <laughs> and um, so uh, what I want to do now is uh, to show you that there is something else than <laughs> Mapnik. <laughs> and um, I also learned this morning uh, that this talk is uh, somewhat opposing the conference motto. <laughs> Um, talking about uh, renderers, um, we once also had uh, Osma render, which was completely strange, doing rendering using XSLT transforms, but, uh, well, this is history, so uh, I won't talk about this anymore. Um, one, uh, one reason I could imagine why um, Mapnik uh, was popular in OpenStreetMap and MapServer was not that much. It's, it's true, MapServer at that time didn't do very beautiful maps. And I, I think I read on the homepage of the Mapnik project, Mapnik was originally designed to draw beautiful maps. Probably uh, the output of MapServer at that time wasn't that beautiful. <laughs> And in nowadays, they are both using the, the anti-grain geometry library as a backend, so that doesn't differ anymore. So now for um, my three programs I will present. This map server, Mapnik as a reference, and uh, GeoServer, which is a newer software. MapServer is actually the oldest of the three pieces of software um, I will present here. Um, and this is a web map mapping, uh, web mapping software, um, which uh, has been written uh, by University of Minnesota originally and is now maintained uh, as a generic open source project. It's sometimes called UMN Map Server, and it's written in uh, mostly written in C++. Um, and the technology differs. That's uh, why I have um, 
That's why I uh, want to show all of the technology behind it because a map server is an application and it's basically a WMS and WFS server, which are OGC standards. And uh, this server is available as a CGI or fast CGI binary for a web server. New in uh, recent times, it's also available as an Apache module. Um, so this can, software can be readily used in, uh, in a web server uh, to render maps. Um, which is not the case in Mapnik. Um, the more interesting thing is there are various script language bindings, uh, so you can use your favorite script language and uh, integrate Map Server, which could be very handy as well. And last but not least, Map Server is very well suited for uh, serving raster images like aerial images um, as a WMS server. So this this, um, this differs from Mapnik because Mapnik is not an application itself. Mapnik is something like a, a library uh, which can be used in uh, Python, C++, and uh, recently Node.js. Um, to get a ready-made application, you need something like uh, mod tile, which is used in, in OpenStreetMap. And uh, there are a couple of Python applications which also use Mapnik. Um, but you need to have an application using Mapnik to actually use Mapnik. You can't just install Mapnik and use it because it's only a library. So the third uh, project uh, I want to show is uh, GeoServer. GeoServer is kind of opposite thing. It's a, a server, a Java-based servlet, so it's, it has to run as a server. So quite the opposite of a library. And um, this uh, is actually, I always say it's a wannabe uh, reference implementation of OGC standards. Uh, so rendering is done in GeoServer using styled layer descriptors, of course, because this is an OGC standard. GeoServer is not using any non-standard stuff, as far as I know. And um, it's also possible to do programming using GeoServer using a REST API, but you always have to run a server, and you can then control the server by using a REST API. Um, so nonetheless, these three projects are very different in design, but all of the three can be used to render maps based on OpenStreetMap data um, and, and uh, for, for a browser user. So on to the rendering examples. I have... Um, is there a laser point or something? Um, this is a complete working example. And um, <laughs> I should probably use them better use the mouse. Uh, okay probably better using the mouse. Um, we have those specifications here for output format and metadata, which is uh, used for the WMS output and is controlling the WMS output. So the actual rendering is uh, done in the one layer I defined here. And uh, this one layer be, consists of a data source, uh, which is a con specified by the connection type postgis and um, an SQL query which is actually actually selecting the data. So what I do here is I did a database view uh, presenting three different colors um, representing the type of forest uh, uh, which is available in the database. So these are these 
deciduous forests, coniferous forests, uh, and mixed forests. And depending on the forest type, the color is rendered in a different uh, shade of green, dark green or light green for light green uh, for deciduous forests and uh, dark green for coniferous forests. And what you actually see here, because this is something which uh, Mapnik cannot do, at least as far as I know in uh, current version, um, I pick a color out of the database and this color has a direct, is a direct input variable for the rendering. So the green uh, is inside a database column, uh, the shade of green, and is rendered in that shade of green. On Mapnik, you always have to specify the color in the style, and the color cannot be picked from the database, um, which is not that handy in practice. So my Mapnik example. On Mapnik, um, you don't need to specify some WMS stuff or output format because that's not the, that's not the purpose of Mapnik. Mapnik is a library, gets you some image, and you have to put that image somewhere using your application so software, which Mapnik isn't. So, um, you can't find this in the style because uh, that's not, not what Mapnik is for. So the, 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 the reason why this style is shorter than the other one is actually uh, that those features have to specify it otherwise uh, using the application config file or something like this. This is actually what, what you have to specify in RenderD or something like that. Um, so Mapnik uh, isn't able to uh, get fetch the, the data from the database. Uh, so what I do is here just one shade of green for all forests. Um, in this special case, I could write I could write tree rules for render three different kinds of forests because there are only three. If I would like to render, let me say, 100 of different shades of green, it would get worse. And uh, the, the map server file would still be like it is yet, yet, yet at the moment. So on to GeoServer. Um, on GeoServer, um, We, we also have another thing uh, which isn't described here, which is the database access. The, on, on map server, the database, uh, on geo server, the database access is not specified in the style. And what you see here uh, is that so-called uh, styled layer descriptor, um, which is, but which is, of course, able to fetch a data value from the database and render this data value. So actually, the output of that style and the one, the, and the one shown in the, uh, in, the in the other style, here uh, is actually producing the, the same output. Uh, I will show you that later. Um, so the three different sh shades of green I have in my database um, are rendered um, as a polygon in my simple style. So far for the examples, as I already said, these are three working examples uh, on tested on an OSM to PGSQL database uh, using the HStore extension um, to uh, get those uh, get those forest uh, types out of the database, uh, which is uh, specified as uh, wood equals something of the tree. Um, 
So, and finally, um, I set up a I set up a table, a comparison table of the tree uh, to see what one uh, software can do, what the other cannot. Um, it, it is my impression that MapServer is currently probably the most powerful rendering software, despite the fact that OpenStreetMap is using Mapnik all the time. Um, because if you compare the features, you will get the most out of map server. Um, the first feature here in, in, in my table row uh, is the one I had already had in my examples. Um, I can use values from database uh, for actually rendering. That's not the case in Mapnik, but that's true for map server and GeoServer. Um, something which is related to that is uh, adjustable units of rendered objects. Usually when I render a highway, I do this not in its natural width because it would be small to large to unvisible on the map. So, for example, highways are rendered, which uh, if, you, if you measure it compared to a real real world width of the of the autobahn it would get a few hundreds hundred hundred meters in width so um, this is something which I do normally on a map to make these streets visible um, this is not something which should be done on something like waterways because waterways should be on the map like they are in the real world so on map server you can specify units as meters, and if you find a width tag in the OpenStreetMap database, you can render this river in its exact physical width um, using the, the meters unit. Uh, if you're using Mapnik, you have to somehow translate this from pixels to meters. That's the rendering software is not, is not doing this for you. Um, also a thing which is possible in GeoServer. Um, okay, so two points for the others, no points for Mapnik, so I have to ha have one now which is uh, better in Mapnik, and there is one, yeah. Uh, but it's actually, I think it's actually the only one I found uh, which Mapnik beats the other two. Um, Map, uh, talking about adjustable gamma is something, if you render overlapping polygons, which is the case if you render uh, the ocean polygons from Jochen's o o uh, OSM coastline uh, polygons, um, on the overlap, you get some rendering artifacts uh, caused by uh, anti-aliasing. And uh, on the anti-grain library, uh, you can just increase the gamma uh, to prevent these artifacts. Um, and on Mapnik, this can be done by layer. So you can do this only for the relevant polygons and leave it as it is for all the rest of the layers. Uh, on Map Server, you can only do this globally. Um, on GeoServer, this is not possible at all. Uh, I found a, a a mailing list post by somebody asking, and is the, one of the authors uh, wrote that this wouldn't be possible in Java 2D to do this at all. Um, so this is a real problem, but because if you are rendering tiled polygons, uh, you always run into that problem. So uh, the next one is arbitrary, arbitrary SQL queries in style. Um, GeoServer isn't working this way because you have to spy, uh, specify a data source which might be a PostgreSQL database, but uh, this has to be uh, a couple of tables using a couple of rows and uh, the abstraction doesn't support anything else, okay? Um, so, um, this can be worked around in GeoServer using database views. So, this is not really a problem. Okay. 
automatic substitution of variables. This, I, I think this is a very handy thing uh, if you're using uh, same things in your style on many, many places. Uh, it's very handy to have some kind of macro function, which is available in Mapnik, Mapnik XML using uh, XML entities, uh, which is missing in the new Arcato CSS, uh, which is not a, uh, not that good because it has been already there. Mm -hmm. The others don't have this, uh, which uh, in map server I always tend to use uh, some kind of generation script, which is doing the real map file out of some input. Um, not that nice. Uh, debug output, uh, that's a bad thing on Mapnik. You have to recompile Mapnik in debug uh, mode to find out which layer is rendering which fast. Um, in map server, this can be achieved using a, a debug switch in the map file only. Um, didn't find something like this in GeoServer, which does not mean that it is not there. Probably it is there, probably somebody knows. Uh, I didn't find. Um, then that's, that's a strange, uh, more, more not that often used feature is clustering. If you have lots and lots of poise, uh, map server can do a clustering for you. Uh, which is handy for lower zoom levels. Uh, this is not possible in Mapnik, maybe possible using some database tricks um, and can be done in GeoServer via extension as well. And um, the last one is line offset. Um, line offset is something which is available in Mapnik since 2.1. Uh, I'm using this in the German style, which I will show you in a minute and um, can be done in Map Server. Uh, is not available in GeoServer as far as I know. So I hope uh, I gave you some intention to look at those uh, projects uh, and not only uh, to Map Server, uh, to Mapnik. Um, and I will uh, try to show you. Uh, very short live demo. So here, um, I will uh, I have this, uh, used this line offset feature in the, in the German style for highway uh, construction or proposed highways. Um, we have one here in the north of Karlsruhe. Um, so this is drawn uh, on a, uh, like just small lines. Uh, this is uh, common in German maps as, as long as, an, as I know German maps to do it this way and uh, in my opinion is less ugly than in the international style. Um, so back to my forest rendering. Um, MapServer and GeoServer do exactly the same. I have, uh, have those forest types rendered in three different shades of green. And uh, the lightest green uh, are these uh, deciduous forests and uh, the darkest green um, are those, um, uh, can see the, <laughs> do not see the, the, the zoom bar. <laughs> and I do not have a mouse wheel. Hmm. Anyway, as you can see, um, the simple style I had in my uh, example presentation pages uh, is working uh, as it should, uh, just rendering forests in a different shade of green. So um, that's it. Questions? Yeah. 
Okay, first some announcements. Um, the lightning talk speakers, uh, especially Bandit Florian, Jay Claus, and D. Kiesler, should come to um, um, to Aula, uh, not to Aula, uh, to building B now. So immediately, please. And yeah, questions. Who has yeah, a question? There have been a question now. Uh, I was just wondering uh, what the key benefit of fusing Geo's server or map server against Mapnik, if I remember well, uh, is it about direct access? Uh, because I was wondering if I, for WMS you have direct access, whereas with Mapnik uh, the use case is different. You have to render tile before and after you generate tiles, but it's static. Whereas geo server and map server are dynamic, so uh, what's the be, uh, in which case will you use geo server, and in which case will you use uh, map server uh, or mapnik? <laughs> I was wondering because uh, in one case. Uh, in your talk, I didn't see the difference between the dynamic parts you have in uh, server like GeoServer and MapServer and uh, MapNik where you pre-render. In which case will you choose uh, it, which tools? It, um, that's very difficult to say because um, all the three pieces of software are able to render maps and uh, all can do this on the fly or using something like RenderD or uh, on, on Apache. Uh, it's actually possible uh, to use um, map server in, uh, uh, in RenderD using the T-Rex backend. That's working. So no, pro uh, no difference there. If you're using map server, you can also use T-Rex with the WMS backend. So no need for live rendering. In, in no case, all, all, all the three are, are capable of doing this. So uh, there is no difference as far as this uh, is concerned. Map server has, as I already told, a few um, very good advantages if you need to render something which is in, inside the database. Um, an example would be, if you would like to do something like a heat map um, with maximum speeds of roads, uh, like uh, in a dark color, uh, if in a high speed, and a light color in a low speed, and there are various values in the database, and on Mapnik you would need to write a style for every of those for for every value. And you won't uh, need to do this in GeoServer or MapServer. It, it is still it is a thing of, of uh, per personal preference, uh, which of the three renderers to use. Um, but there are a few things which the one can do better than the other. That's what I try to do in the comparison table. Yeah. Okay, more questions from the audience? Um, can you comment on relative speed, preferably with comparable styles between the three? Because, yeah. I mean, nice additional features yeah. are good, but not if it takes 10 yeah. times as long to render. They are surprisingly similar. It, I think Map server might be a little bit slower, but it's uh, not above the 10% range or so. But uh, they are very similar am among the three. Okay, thanks. So there are more questions. Okay, then thank you, Sven. And welcome our...